The dreaded Osaka flu has hit Springfield with over 300 cases now reported. The Simpsons has developed a reputation for predicting the future over its 30-year run. Oftentimes, these feel purely coincidental, something that was bound to happen every so often with a show spanning nearly 700 episodes. But sometimes, it seems like the writer's room had a crystal ball on the table. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. And yet other times there's another explanation altogether. In our internet age of misinformation, people can be fooled into thinking or misremembering that The Simpsons predicted something that in actuality they never did. As early as January 30th, 2020, claims started cropping up on social media that The Simpsons essentially predicted the coronavirus some 27 years ago with what appeared to be images from a single episode. So did The Simpsons really predict the coronavirus, or has Twitter deceived us yet again? Cineflect investigates in another installment of Screen Sleuth, the series where I examine a movie or TV show in order to unravel a phenomenon, clear up a controversy, or strive to separate fact from fiction. I suppose we'd better start with these screenshots, which certainly do seem convincing, especially the one that flat out reads coronavirus. Well, we'll get to that one momentarily, because it's actually from a much later episode. But the other three stills are indeed from 27 years ago, specifically Season 4, Episode 21, Marge and Chains, which aired on May 6, 1993. In this episode, and it's a very funny episode I might add, Springfield residents order juice looseners as seen on TV. These are manufactured and shipped from Osaka, Japan, where one of the assembly line workers admits to his colleague that he's clocked in despite having the flu. Please don't tell the supervisor I have the flu. <coughs> and promptly coughs into a package addressed to the ever hapless Homer. Oh, my juice loosener's never gonna come. Hey, Dad, this came for you in the mail. Woohoo! <laughs> As it turns out, Homer isn't the only denizen of Springfield who ordered a juice loosener. And so the airborne virus proceeds to infect the city. But at least it has the common decency to obey local traffic laws. Before long, it's dubbed the Osaka flu by the local news. The dreaded Osaka flu has hit Springfield with over 300 cases now reported. But fear not, the government has everything under control. People of Springfield. Because of the epidemic, I have canceled my vacation to the Bahamas. I shall not leave the city. Hey, you! Get that steel drum out of the, uh, mayor's office. Sorry, man. Or maybe not. We need a cure! We need a cure! As it turns out, the Osaka flu isn't really that big of a deal. Ho, 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 ho. Why, the only cure is bed rest. Anything I give you would only be a placebo. It leads to no casualties, and within 10 minutes, it's not even a plot point anymore. Which, honestly, I found pretty strange. They could have easily revolved the entire episode around the Osaka flu, but instead, as the title Marge and Chains suggests, it focuses on the fallout of Mrs. Simpson accidentally shoplifting a bottle of bourbon from Quickie Mart. And for the purposes of this investigation, there's nothing else in this episode of note. So, just how similar is the fictitious Osaka flu to the coronavirus? Well, to paint with a semi-broad brush, it is an airborne virus that originates from Asia, which also describes COVID-19. But the Osaka flu is not that serious and leads to no deaths that we're aware of, whereas the coronavirus has already claimed well over one million lives worldwide. The human response to the Osaka flu also bears some striking similarities, particularly when it comes to the panic of the populace and the ineptitude of their elected leaders. Wait a minute. I don't see a single face mask in that crowd. I don't think Dr. Fauci would approve of Dr. Hibbert failing to curb what could very well be a super spreading event. While we're here, it's been pointed out that Marge and Chains predicted 2020 beyond the coronavirus. Killer bees? Where do we get these placebos? Maybe there's some in this truck. <laughs> Tearing down statues of political figures. Rioting and looting. And would-be police violence. Release the dogs. Gee, they look pretty mad. Yeah, I've been starving them, tasing them, singing off-key. 
All told, it's a pretty stunning collection of coincidences. But let's get back to the primary prediction, coronavirus and the smoking gun that gave this claim so much validity. This image of Springfield newscaster Kent Brockman with the graphic reading coronavirus. Well, the image originated much later, 17 years in fact, in season 22, episode 6, The Full Monty, which aired on November 21st, 2010, still a decade before COVID-19. The episode begins in New York City, where representatives from every major TV news outlet meet in the head of the Statue of Liberty. Desperate to boost their ratings, they cook up a scheme. I think we should go with a good old-fashioned public health scare. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A new disease. No one's immune. It's like the summer of the shark, except instead of a shark, it's an epidemic. And instead of summer, it's all the time. We do have standards. This can't be a made-up disease. The only moral thing to do is release a deadly virus into the general public. Oh, no, we just have to blame it on something that's in every household. Something that People are a little bit afraid of already. The result is dubbed house cat flu. House cat flu is coming, people. The center for disease. Look familiar? This is the very screenshot used in the initial claims. But as you can see, someone simply added the text coronavirus over apocalypse meow and passed it off as an actual screen grab to give their assertion all the more weight. Once again, it was a photoshopped image used to fool people. But unlike this one, it took very little effort. I mean, they didn't even bother blacking out the original text. Come on, internet trolls. Raise your deception standards just a little bit. Try to make this hard for me. That's what she said. <laughs> So we can toss this image out the window. Even though The Full Monty does contain some very amusing gags about house cat flu and on the topic of vaccinations. Don't worry people, we have enough vaccines for one child per family. Oh, I don't even have a kid that I admit Please to use your time in line wisely to Sophie's Choice, your child. This part killed me. <laughs> Hurry everyone, roll in the shards. Come on like this. Uh, healthy, getting healthy, oh, getting healthy, and very sleepy. Just like Margin Chains, it's only used as a setup and virtually disappears from the plot in a matter of minutes. Which leaves us with the Osaka flu. Was this really a prediction? There's perhaps nobody better to ask than Bill Oakley, who co-wrote the episode Margin Chains alongside Josh Weinstein. After the claims went viral, Oakley spoke with The Hollywood Reporter, saying, I don't like it being used for nefarious purposes. The idea that anyone misappropriates it to make coronavirus seem like an Asian plot is terrible. In terms of trying to place blame on Asia, I think that is gross. He then explained how they came up with the Osaka flu. I believe the most antecedent to Osaka flu was the Hong Kong flu of 1968. Oakley added that he saw headlines about it as a child. It was just supposed to be a quick joke about how the flu got here. It was meant to be absurd that someone could cough into a box and the virus would survive for six to eight weeks in the box. It is cartoonish. We intentionally made it cartoonish because we wanted it to be silly and not scary, and not carry any of these bad associations along with it, which is why the virus itself was acting like a cartoon character and behaving in extremely unrealistic ways. Oakley concludes, there are very few cases where the Simpsons predicted something. It's mainly just coincidence because the episodes are so old that history repeats itself. Most of these episodes are based on things that happened in the 60s, 70s, or 80s that we knew about. One of my favorite quotes comes from George Seville. The best qualification of a prophet is to have a good memory. And I think that sums up this installment of Screen Sleuth rather nicely. Cineflect rates this claim coincidence with a side of hoax. What do you think of this claim, the episodes discussed, and Bill Oakley's response? Also, what else would you like to see me investigate? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you down there. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Cineflex for more investigations, video essays, film lists, and more. And click that bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video. For Cineflex, I'm J.S. Lewis. Until next time, watch something good.